The moving clouds technique will stand or fall depending on the image we've chosen. It needs to be the right choice and generally speaking, always exceptions of course, try to get one that has cloud all over the sky. I found that helps quite a bit. We also need a little trial and error because every image is unique and there's no button press or list of settings to guarantee a result here. We have to work a little for it. You're very likely to need an image editor like Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. And although what we're going to do here may be able to be done with pictures to XE masks, the masks within Photoshop or Elements can be much more easily adjusted. What I've often found when I've been creating this effect is I need to create a little image flip, a little trick just to make this a little more pleasing and acceptable to the eye. Now this is the image I'm going to create the moving clouds on and as you can see it's nicely sandwiched between the similar images either side so it's all in context we've got a good choice of images and you can see the cloud covers virtually the entire sky. Overall though what we need here is to be subtle. So subtle that some viewers are going to miss the movement in the clouds entirely. But that can't be helped. If we arrange the clouds to be belting across the screen, yes, that's going to attract our viewers, but I'm afraid for all the wrong reasons. I'm going to make a start with this image. I'm going to hit Control W, which will open it up into Photoshop. What I want to do here is to make a selection of the majority of the sky but I don't want to go too close to the hillsides because we don't want to see those of course. So I'm going to pick up my freehand lasso tool and I'm just going to make an irregular shape right the way across and around and down. What we're going to do is to create a patch. We're going to copy what's inside that selection. We're going to save that as a PNG file. That way It'll sit over the top of the base image and allow us to move it. But we need that line to be quite soft. So I'm going to go to my Select and Mask here. And what we need is something soft enough but not too far. I, you know, I've got something like 30 odd pixels here. That looks okay to me. So let's click OK. I've got my output here just set to my selection. Then all I'm going to do is to copy what's within that sky to a new layer. Control J will do that and there you can see it. Now there's the patch that I'm talking about. When we save this as a PNG file of course all of this is retained as transparent. So these two images sit within pictures to XE much as they're sitting now but that allows me to move this top layer which I can simulate here. But as soon as I do, and assuming we're going to move the clouds to the right, you can see an instant problem on the left hand side. Straight edge. Well that's easy to put right. If we select the layer that contains the cloud, we can apply a layer mask. Once the mask has been applied, select black as your foreground colour, select a basic soft edged brush, something like that, that's big enough, and drop the flow rate down to about 5%. And you may even find it's helpful if you turn the base image off here while you're spraying onto the mask, because it's an easier way to see when the straight line is actually gone. And I'm using a little bit of an up and down movement to start with, but now I'm going to use a backwards and forwards one to just gradually merge that straight edge in. There's always a temptation when we're doing this work to increase the flow of the brush sometimes. But you know, it's near enough always a mistake. A little bit of patience usually pays dividends. Now if I turn that bottom layer back on, pick up the Move tool and move this back into place. It started its life there. So if I now move it to the right, 
you can see, well, in actual fact, we've still got a hint of that straight edge. So this is why I like using layer masks, because we do have the opportunity to go back in and make some adjustments. But the one thing we're going to have a problem with here, I think, is as we move the clouds to the right, we get a little bit of repetition. But what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put in effects straight away, because that's not how real life is. Let me try it first. So we're going to start here by, we've already got the base image saved, of course. So that's in pictures to exe waiting for us. So if I turn this one off and this one on, if I save this now as a PNG file, we're in the right place. So I just need to select the PNG save option. I'll call this clouds moving. Save that and OK. I'm going to leave this on screen, but it would be a good idea to save it as a Photoshop file because there's a good chance it's already saving, so I'm going to have to come back to save this as a Photoshop file in a moment. It's a good chance that we're going to need to come back to the sky here and make an adjustment. If we do, we don't want to come back and find we've accidentally shut this down or we don't have it saved. So as soon as my PNG has been saved, then I'll save this as a Photoshop file too. Coming back into Pictures to Exe, I've got all of the default settings here, two second fade on screen and a seven second slide duration. I think I'll just give myself a little more time with the image we're working on, so I'll just increase that to 12 seconds. In the file list above, you can see that I've got the Moving Clouds PNG sitting there waiting for me. And I did save my Photoshop file into the same folder. But of course, although it's sitting in the Clouds folder, we can't see it here because it's a Photoshop file. But to be honest, I think that's a good thing. We've got it safely stored with all the other images, but we don't want to get confused by having lots of files like those in the file list. So let's go back to the image we're going to have the moving clouds on and open this up into the objects and animation screen. Clicking into the gray area to lose the bounding box, I'm going to go to the top and add an image. And of course, the image that I want is not one of those, but it's clouds moving. Now, when it pops on screen, we don't see anything because it's identical to the picture it's dropped on top of, but we see it down here. Let's go to the animation. What I'm going to do up here is to hit Alt Insert to insert a cloned keyframe. So we're going to have the clouds moving before the image fades on screen and we need the clouds moving while the image fades off the screen. Clouds don't suddenly stop halfway through their travel. We need to have them moving for the entire time the image is on screen. So all we've got to do now really is to decide how much movement and what type of movement we're going to have. And because we're starting the movement before the image actually starts to appear on screen and it's still going to be working when it leaves the screen, we don't have to worry about speed here because we don't want the clouds moving too fast. So I'm just going to go to my pan X and I'm just going to drag my clouds to the right. Now let's go back and let's just take a look and see just how that looks because it is all trial and error. Trial and error in relation to the speed the clouds are going to move. So let's press play. And straight away I'm going to suggest that that's a little bit too fast. But I'm also going to point out, I think, the other problem that I can see. If I click into the grey area to lose the bounding box, this is the sort of problem we have. We start to get a repetition. Now, sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. But here's one way we can often get around this. I'm going to go back into Photoshop and I'm going to flip the cloud layer over. So I just want to flip this layer over. So if I go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal, 
Well, you can see the problem. When I start to move the clouds now, I've got my straight edge at the other end of the clouds. Well, no problem with that. We've still got the mask in place. We can pick up our brush, and this is why it's a great thing to hang on to this. I will increase the flow a little bit to speed up the process. I'll go to 10%. But I'm just going to, whoops, that's not quite right. Let's go to my mask. I must remember to select my mask and then start the masking. If you start spraying and you find color appearing, or in my case that gray color, you know you've done something wrong. So I need to make sure that line is gone. Let's just have a quick look. Still a little bit visible there. So let's just merge it in a, bit, a little bit more. But now, of course, what I need to do is to perhaps move it back into the center again that's where it started its life I need to save this now to save a bit of time I could save this directly over the top of the one we've been using so file save as selecting the PNG I wouldn't do this if there was any doubt about what I'm doing here. I'm pretty certain I don't want to use that sky. If I wanted to keep this up my sleeve, of course, I would just change the name slightly. But here I don't think I'm going to need to, so I'm going to say yes to that to go over the top. Now we can go back into Pictures to Exe, and hopefully it's going to look much nicer on the eye. Now I've not done anything here, just opened up Pictures to Exe. Let me put my cursor in the image before we'll press play and we'll just look and see what we think of the cloud movement I think the only thing I would like to do is to remove that little bit of blue there see this little bit of blue here this is why I like to use a layer mask because when we're doing this sort of work this is what we often almost always need to do we never get things right absolutely perfect first time so I think I'd like to go back into Photoshop and just mask away that little bit of blue here we are let's select the mask we've still got black pick up our brush and I'll drop that down to 5% again and sometimes we may want to make the brush a bit smaller if we want to go into little nooks and crannies I noticed there was a little bit of blue up there I may even knock that out as well now I'm going to try that. So once again, just in case, now, now I'm at a, a position now where I'm not entirely sure that what I've done is going to be better than this. So just in case, what we'll do here is we'll just call this Moving Clouds 2. So we've got both opportunities. But of course it does mean that when I go back into Pictures to Exe, what I've got to do is to switch them around and it's not appeared here yet and it has while I was talking because it was saving in Photoshop so there's the layer that I want so I need to go back to my image objects and animation screen select the moving clouds but now I can go to my properties and I can switch it around using the picture option just use the little down arrow now I can go and select the other clouds and close and test now if I stop it at this point there's a little light area there that I'd like to deal with and a little bit there and I also would like to slow down the clouds a little bit I feel they're running too fast so I'm going to go back into Photoshop a little bit of masking on that bottom edge just to clear the top of the hill and then I'm going to come back and adjust the animation so coming back into the objects and animation screen I do need to change this I did save it with a different name I called this one clouds moving three so I'm just going to switch that there it is and I wanted to reduce the movement in the clouds. The movement between the first keyframe here and the second keyframe is 25 and that's a little bit too much I think. I'm going to drop it back to well let's try 15. I'll just do a test here 
because the clouds really need to be subtle and I would suggest that is on the upper limit I may even decide to be a bit more subtle than that and maybe come down to 12 try again and I think that is the sort of subtlety that I was talking about right at the start let's take a look at this with the images either side of it in the other screen I'll press play and we'll take a look in the mini player I think that looks pretty good I think there's a little bit of masking I could possibly do on the left hand side but I'm nitpicking just a little bit as you can see here I've cleared all of the work from the slide list but of course I've saved it first but what I've done so you can get a full screen preview of what I've just demonstrated here I've made a slide style of it as before I think I mentioned this before if you do a file new from the top of the screen just make sure you've got one blank in place because otherwise you can't get to the slide style I'll include this slide style you can copy the slide style to your desktop and then use the options here in the tools to import it and what I've got here is one I've called moving clouds clouds one as you can see it doesn't require any images because all of the images are built into the style so you can just click and then press preview and you've got a full screen preview of exactly what we've done and not only that you can then open up this image in your version of pictures to XE9 and you get to see the two parts of what makes the moving clouds and you can make some adjustments and see how it all works moving clouds as long as we're subtle and we don't do it in every image if we did this for every image in a sequence it would become monotonous so it needs to be delicate and use it once and it's just a nice effect